If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. What's up, everybody? It's Mind Pump, your favorite fitness and health podcast. Uh, now, I'm one of the hosts, and I'm still self-quarantined. There's only two more episodes that you're going to hear where I'm calling in from the phone, and then I get to see uh, my best friends in person again to record uh, in our studio. But anyway, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. And the way we open the episode is by talking with each other about our, our lives. We talk about you know the current events. Uh, we mention our sponsors. So here's the rundown of what we talked about in this episode. Now, we start out by talking about the stimulus package that was passed by Congress uh, that's supposed to help us all out with the economic repercussions of this coronavirus pandemic. Then we talked about a guy who started an airplane company last week so he could get a $10 million bailout. Brilliant. Brilliant. We talked about the Neuralink. Uh, Elon Musk is saying that that's moving ahead. We talked about Tiger King on Netflix. That is a crazy crazy show. We talk about the presidential election and what that may look like if we're all still stuck at home. We talk about Rise Supplements and how they're crap. Uh, We talk about uh, one of the fears uh, of the internet. I guess they're talking about how some companies uh, are just can't handle the bandwidth now that everybody's at home uh, streaming videos and stuff like that. And then we talk about companies that are doing really well during the shutdown. One of them is Magic Spoon. Now, Magic Spoon makes kid-like cereals, so they taste like kid cereals, but they're high in protein, very high in protein, whey protein, in fact, and they're very low in sugar. In fact, there's no sugar. Magic Spoon also donated 20,000 boxes of this cereal to kids in New York who were dependent on school for providing them with some of their meals. Anyway, Magic Spoon delivers to your door. This is a great time to try it out. If you want a high-protein delicious snack. Here's what you do. Go to magicspoon.com. That's M-A-G-I-C-S-P-O-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. And you'll get an automatic discount. You'll also get free shipping uh, because you're listening to mind pump. And don't forget to use the code mind pump for all of that. Then we talk about how they may be using the blood from coronavirus survivors to heal people who currently have coronavirus. So that's kind of turn it into vampires. And then we talk about how we are missing vegetables. Uh, Vegetables are sold out everywhere and how we're relying on our Organifi green juice. I've been taking that three times a day to make up for it. Now, Organifi makes organic supplements, including a green juice that tastes amazing and provides you with lots of phytonutrients. And they even have some ashwagandha in there, which is really good for stress, anxiety. Anyhow, you get 20% off all their products because you're a Mind Pump listener. Here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. So that was the intro portion, about 41 minutes. Then we got into the questions. The first question was, how do you guys get your kids to eat healthy? So it's a very difficult subject. So we talk about our strategies at home. The next question, is it bad to extend all the way in pushing movements like shoulder presses? Should I lock my arms out? Because I've heard that that's a bad thing. So we talk all about full range of motion versus partial range of motion, the pros and the cons. The next question, this person says, look, uh, when we're finally allowed to go back to the gym, how do I get back into lifting heavy without hurting myself? So we talk about strategies of easing your body back into heavy workouts. And then the final question, this person wants to know what the pros and cons are to artificial sweeteners. Also, Four days left, everybody. There's four days left for the Maps Anywhere 50% off sale. Now, Maps Anywhere is an at-home workout program, requires minimal equipment. All you need are resistance bands, a broomstick, and a pull-up bar. And you can have a phenomenal muscle-building, fat-burning workout at home. Remember, the program includes everything. You log in. you got the, uh, the blueprints that tell you what to do for the day, how many reps and sets, what the exercise are. And then you can click on the exercise and watch demonstrations so you know how to do the right form. This program, 50% off, it ends in four days. To take advantage of this promotion, go to mapswhite.com. That's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E.com and use the code WHITE50 for the discount. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0 without a space. Hey, so I uh, I have to correct something that we were wrong on that we talked about, I think, uh, yesterday or the day before. Impossible. Yeah, no. I know. Well, I, I wasn't wrong. You were wrong. 
Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, you, so I have to correct it for sure, right? <laughs> Dude, Adam's been waiting for a moment like this. No, no. So remember I told you the, the $2 trillion bill that just got passed. That is the largest stimulus package in history. It was more than, than uh, 2008. So wow. this is this is the the most uh, we've ever seen in history, and on that note, I I, I like uh, I was what is it? I'm gonna give the credit to oh, the hustle did this. I thought this was really cool. Um, the hustle actually broke down uh, how, what what what's allocated to what out of the two trillion dollar stimulus package. So uh, individuals and families, uh, it'll be dispersed three hundred one billion to direct assistance. So individuals who earn less than $75,000 a year will get a $1.2,000 check. 1.2,000? Yeah. yeah. So 1200 <laughs> That's how they wrote it. Uh, families will receive- Sounds like a lot. Uh, families will receive- Yeah, it's probably why they wrote it that way. Families will receive an additional $500 per child. Uh, assistance decreases for people who earn greater than $75,000 a year and stops for those who earn $99,000 plus a year. So if you make a hundred grand a year, you're fucked. You don't get nothing. Uh, two, three hundred fifty billion in loans are earmarked for small businesses, so they'll be available through June thirtieth, and forgiven for businesses that that keep paying their employees. So companies with less than five hundred employees can access loans up to ten, up to ten million to pay their staff. But many small businesses say they're already running into problems getting financial assistance and say they could go under before the new rescue money is dueled out. Uh, number three, unemployed workers will get $250 billion in benefits. So unemployment assistance will increase by $600 for the next four months. Uh, benefits will extend for an additional 13 weeks and will apply to non-traditional employees like gig workers. And then for $500 billion in loans and other aid will be set aside for corporations, states, and local governments. So $454 billion of the money will be available through a fund controlled by the Federal Reserve. Oh, yeah, we trust them. Yeah. The rest, the rest will be set aside for specific industries, including $29 billion for passenger and cargo airlines. Jeez. State yeah. and local governments will get $150 billion. When news of the deal broke yesterday, the Dow Jones rose more than 11%. Wow. You know, this is so crazy. It's like, like, like for example, you think of the, the loans that they're going to give to businesses, and if they keep paying their employees, they get forgiven. How are they going to control all that? And I feel like that's such a, that could be something that could be totally taken advantage of. Oh, oh yeah. And it will, just like uh, any any welfare, right? Is it's all, like the, there's always it's there's, like gonna be, there's gonna be people that absolutely need it and deserve it and use it to keep themselves just afloat and their head above water and survive and keep their employees, and then there'll be uh, many that uh, bunch of shucksters well, out yeah, there. Yeah, will yeah. take advantage of it. Uh, like I said, like you see uh, with welfare. Well, here, so 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 hear me out, right? So I read an article that I thought was satire. I thought it was a joke. But um, it's actually true, <laughs> and quite a few people have done doing this. So there was a man uh, in Indiana who started an airline company last week, so that he could get so that he could get ten million dollar bailout. No, no, yeah. he did not. Now, yeah, now I thought, oh, this is a joke. There's no way. Uh, no, it's real, and uh, he's not the only one. He, he's not alone. There have been 25 new airline companies started in the past week, and over 50 cruise ship companies. Oh, that's wow. some bullshit, bro. So you, so I mean, uh, so so smart though. I mean, you just what do you do? You go buy, you buy four yeah, planes. Yeah, can't you check the date of when they formed a company and be like, ah, uh, no, like this is complete bullshit. I, uh, that's it's hilarious. Half of these companies are headquartered in Florida, so <laughs> <laughs> and the other the other half in, oh, in Florida. Uh, in, in Bermuda. So they interviewed this guy. So this guy is purposely doing this and he's not like lying about it. He's being, so he called, you know what he called his airline company? What? Uh, bailout flights. <laughs> no, he did like, not. Like just straight it up. It wasn't. A, this isn't from the onion. Like yeah. this has to be dude. No, this is, this is a real, this, he's actually doing this. And he says, this is no joke. They interviewed him. I swear to God, I'm reading this article right now. And I think he's doing it, uh, you know, on purpose to try to 
well, to to kind of make fun of the whole thing, you know, yeah. or or come up come up on four or five planes. Well, that's that. what he says. He says uh, they interviewed him and it said that he already has planes. What he wants uh, plans? Excuse me. What he wants to do with the ten million dollar paycheck? They interviewed him. They said, "What are you going to do with your ten million dollars if you get a bailout?" He says, "Hookers and booze." <laughs> He did not say that. <laughs> yes, he did. Who is this guy? Wow. This, you know, but 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 again, there's been 25 new airline companies started in the past week. As soon as they heard, you know, as soon as people hear, yeah, there was rumors that the, money. Yeah, there was rumors Man, that the cruise line, the cruise lines, and the airlines would have to be bailed out because again, too big to fail, right? Yeah. So that was so. As soon as people started hearing that, probably three weeks ago, whenever it started, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, what a smart strategy, though. You go buy go buy two planes on credit, you know, and before your first credit card payment is due, you've already got a, a stimulus package out that bails uh, your company out because you have a quote unquote airline business that's never probably flown a single person fucking anywhere, but because you started it up before the bailout. You now can get your probably your ten million dollars that you can now pay off your Man. your jet. That's crazy to me. This guy's just straight calling it out. Look how easy it is, you know, like just like out in the open with it. That's hilarious. But I mean, it, well, it's, it's an extreme example of like what's you know that's it. That's in a very extreme example. But how many people are going to take advantage of of this the trillions of dollars that's going out? Yeah, that's the oh. unfortunate part. Oh, so many people are going to take advantage of it. It's like they're what they're doing right now. You know, Arthur Brooks. Uh, used a great analogy. He said it's like they're flying a helicopter uh, above us and just throwing money out yeah. to try and fix the problem. And I, you know, I get the, I get why they're doing it. Um, I definitely think that in, in many cases this is probably going to be a good thing. But you know, all these these bailouts of industries and all this money, there's, it's not going to be uh, without its own repercussions. You know what I mean? It's not like you're gonna. It's not like there's no side effects to this to this medicine right. uh, that we're taking. Because what, what I, I mean, where's this money coming from? It's yeah. literally where's the value of our dollar going to be after all this? It, it's it's printed out of thin air. Um, so you know, I think that maybe investing in like gold mm -hmm. is probably going to be a good idea um, because you know what happens when the dollar goes down. I don't know, but so many governments are doing this. Is it even going to matter? Oh you know yeah, I mean? will it just bring everybody down at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, is the whole world going to? It's crazy. Ugh. I know. I, I know. In uh, some, oh God, where was it? I can't remember where it was. I think it might have been San Francisco, where they're trying to pass a law where everyone's going to get ninety days of uh, rent forgiveness. Um, so that's one thing. I know in Italy, they they were uh, mortgage companies were letting people not pay their mortgages mm -hmm. for the next couple, you know, months. Yeah, that makes I mean, sense to me. Yeah, but there's going to be some repercussions to all of this. There's got to be. This has got. Yeah. I think. I think I read that the that uh, unemployment or or uh, claims or something like that is like the, the largest ever, mm -hmm. ever. ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just surpassed. It surpassed oh eight. Uh, big crowd. It surpassed uh, Great Depression times. Like it was. It's been the unemployment rate went up so so hard and so fast in just a matter of two weeks. Yeah, it was three. I think three million is what uh, filed for unemployment. I yeah, think the highest before that was like. 200 something thousand all-time highest i think was 600 something thousand do you guys find yourself i'm sure i'm not the only one do you guys find yourself going back and forth between like this is the right thing to do we got to do this and oh shit it, we're, uh -oh. we're gonna cause more problems like this is worse all the time yeah i'm wrestling with it back and forth like uh you know how are they gonna remedy all this especially the the economic uh impact well the, the truth is i i recognize this is far above my pay grade as much as i yeah I, I, <laughs> yeah no I, shit. I love uh economics and i i like paying attention to that uh i have no idea what's gonna happen i have i have no idea if this is the right move or it's the worst move yeah you know, like I, it's it's hard to say. It's it sounds pretty fucking scary though to just infuse two trillion dollars into our economy in hopes. You know, and and I like Arthur Brooks' analogy. It's it is. It's just like dumping it out out of the plane and hoping that you know the right people get a hold of it. You know, and but in reality, a lot of people that don't need it or shouldn't get it, and a lot of it's probably going to go to waste. And you have to ask yourself, what will that? You know, what will the ramifications be yeah. uh, from that? Well, meanwhile, uh, Elon Musk is still operating at full speed, 
and, and innovating and doing crazy things. Did you see like so Tuesday? I guess he uh, announced that like by next year he's going to be able to implant a chip uh, for this neural link into human beings. And he's, ar- he's already done this with with a monkey successfully, and the monkey's been able to uh, control a computer uh, with his neural link. So wow. that's pretty insane. Like, uh, I, I, I'm, and of course, his whole motivation with this is to basically get ahead of this whole AI thing and the scare. Like, he wants us to be able to have this symbiotic relationship with it, with this neural link thing. But uh, the early adopters, man, like, who who's gonna like take that chance right now? That that just seems so crazy and out there for me. Is oh, he- dude, it sounds it's it sounds like uh, like end of times. Like you know, it started with the plague. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. And then, yeah, and then <laughs> this crazy thing, and then all of a sudden now we're advancing. You know, to new levels we've never seen. You know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Ahead. We've been watching Westworld, and and it, it makes me think too. Like obviously they they, they make an extreme uh, like oh shit, this is this is how bad it could get. But then there's another part of me too that like if you're when you're that far in the future and you're looking back at even our time and how we like freak out about kids being on social media and texting all the time and no one calls or talks to each other. I mean, is it is it just the natural progression of this is how communication will be done in the future? Mm. You know, we'll just be able to have these neural links in our head and I'll be we could all be just looking at each other and you can read my thoughts, I could read your thoughts and uh, you have the ability to to have connections to people across the world and have those conversations as if they're in your head instantaneously. Like, is that is that bad or is it just the natural progression of like how com- communication is slowly start without well, so quickly starting to evolve in the well, the last few decades? I don't know if it's if it's good or bad, but because it's so radically different, um, it's going to present uh, unforeseen um, challenges. Any time that we we have an invention. Isn't that, that what, that's, what they, that's with everything though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's but the, some with, things are much more. Some things are 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 bigger um, changes than others. For example, like uh, the birth control pill, for example, separated the the fear of uh, pregnancy um, with sex, and it de- and it gave that that power to women and a lot of people. And and you and after that, you saw a lot of uh, relationship issues between men and women. And I'm not saying it was a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying it posed completely new challenges. Mm-hmm. And some people would say that, you know, divorce rates spiked. Um, and that was a kind of part of it. it was part of the growing pains of it. Getting our, our, you know, connecting through the Internet and having access to all that information mm-hmm. without that's like unprecedented. But like it's game ever, changer. Yeah, it's yeah. going to completely change the way that we do business, the way that we learn uh, the way that we interact with people have, you know, relationships, it's it's across the board. So this is one of those things that uh, has the potential to really just completely recreate the environment around us. It's going to be interesting. Well, I feel I feel like there's already examples of us starting to do that. This is just it's just the one step closer. Right. Like what yeah. what do you do right now that you couldn't do just a, a decade or two ago, but two decades ago for sure? Uh, you're in an argument with your, your, your buddy and it's whether it be political, whether it be sports and you guys are debating something back and forth via text. What are you doing between every text message? You're fucking researching. Yeah. yeah you're researching. <laughs> you're Googling as fast you're as you can. You're already going to know it. Right. Right. Away. Right. Yeah. You're, you're already Googling all the things that you, to rebuttal what you think he's already going to come. So the difference is now you just have this hyper speed connection to that. Like I, I can access that information faster i'm already doing that though yeah so yeah. you know is it that radically different or is it getting just you know more efficient so here's here along those lines right so here we are we're looking things up on the internet you would think that you know if you were to go back 50 years and say we'd have access to all the information ever recorded then we would think oh arguments are going to be settled super fast people are going to it's not going to be a problem we're going to have all the information but the opposite is true you and him, you and your friend, you know, argue or debate over something. He goes and finds three articles that support what he's saying. I go and find three that support what I'm saying. And we just, you know, dig our heels in the dirt. It's a and stalemate. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. It, sure. Uh, sure. On on uh, philosophical uh, debates. Mm-hmm. But when you're debating hard facts, you know, that are mathematical or scientific, it's going to it'll be a lot more cut and dry. And we weren't able to do that. So there's the pros to that. Some, uh, but sure, but, but sure, if you're if you're debating something that's, 
you know, philosophical. That's it's never going to be. I mean, there's going to be a, a definitely a strong supporting uh, information on both sides that will cause consistent. Well, dude, sometimes, but I mean, I, I don't ever remember a flat Earth movement. You know, when I was younger, there was no. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah I that mean, was some, a, a bad byproduct of. YouTube. Yeah, sometimes it's that's what I'm saying. I think we think that uh, information is going to solve all of our problems. And if we could just connect to it faster, I just, I just think, I don't that, think th so. there's, there's still going to be outliers that are just delirious. Right. I, I mean, did you finish uh, tiger King yet? No, I haven't. Oh, I damn it. Yeah, please oh. finish that show. I, yeah, that, that show is just so, it's, un it's the hero of this whole stay at home uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> He's my hero. Well, too, it's also, it's just, a, it's, it's also an example of like how people can just be so out there in their own world. Like this dude had like, had his own reality TV show that he was creating for himself and literally <laughs> thought like the whole world was paying attention. Meanwhile, the dude probably had a few hundred, maybe a few thousand people paying attention to what he's doing it, but his ego was so inflated. It would say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely going to be uh, outliers in, in every scenario you have. So dude, the part where, you, you know, he takes on another husband, it was that young kid, the real oh, tall, God, lanky yes. looking kid, the photo, how yeah. about the photo? We, we, we want to order the photo and hang it around the fireplace. Oh, what do you think? God, where they're laying down with their shirts <laughs> off. Oh, I, dude, I, did, did you guys feel bad for the kid? Cause I'm looking at this kid and I'm like, you yeah, he's like so confused. Yeah, yeah, he just kept so feeding him drugs. He's like, he'll well, stay. You're not even far enough to see what happens. Wait till you uh, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, it gets worse. His, his oh, first dude, husband every single, wasn't even gay. Every single episode, it they they do a great job. Whoever whoever directed it did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you couldn't script a crazier story, but they did a really good job about how every episode like took a, a huge turn. Right at the end, it just... Every episode, you like you, oh, a new yeah. character is introduced. Everybody's a character. Everybody's crazy. Yeah, it was like across the board. Like you had so many like interesting characters in there that were just had fucked up ideas. Yeah, and so yeah. I can't believe people like that exist. I yeah. love it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's fun to watch. It, it felt like it felt like an eight, eight series part of Jerry Springer that yeah, just, just, <laughs> it just never totally. ended. You know. Yeah. Oh, and here's your sure. cousin. Hey. Hey. Who's really your dad and your brother? Uh, we can save your arm, or you can just amputate it. Yeah, amputate it. Woo! Best oh, decision God. I've ever made. Hey, so so uh, I was reading some, you know, uh, an article about the election, and I didn't even think about this. If this whole thing is is still going on by the time the election is coming around, um, I didn't even think about this, right? So a, a lot, of, most votes or a lot of votes happen at booths. Oh yeah, they were talking about having to maybe postpone it. Well, they were also right? talking about passing, uh, passing something that, that you could take it uh, virtually now. Yeah, is that what? Well, that's, that's part of the debate right now. So I, that's, yeah, that's, no, that's well, scary because of hackers and shit, right? Yeah. Well, they're talking about doing it by mail. You're right because uh, because it was done. You know, the way that it's decentralized now, it's really hard to to like mess with. You know what I mean? But if it was all virtually. Could you imagine the way people? Because you remember how people were when when Trump won, yes. or even go back when uh, when Bush beat um, uh, what's his name, and there were all those debates that had to go to the was it Supreme Dole? Court. Yeah, Gore. Yeah, or Gore. Yeah, yeah. So, so imagine if if it's all virtual, um, and people don't like who won, and it was really really close. You know, they're gonna be like, oh, it was it was totally faked, and right. oh my god, that could cause some serious problems. But they're they're talking about maybe doing it by mail because so many of the people that work the booths are like over 60 oh, wow. and you know, this can be crazy. And if they postpone it, that would be a bad thing. Yeah. If they're they not going to want to do that. Yeah. They're going to want to No, dude. Yeah. Well, what do you think so bad about the them date. postponing it? Oh my God. That would fuel the, the, the anti, you know, the, the, the side that hates Trump. Yeah. That's like, he is taking power. Gonna he's going to be he's trying to be forever. king, you know, like, yeah, by, by changing all these uh, policies and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I would never want that. I would never want, I don't care who the president is. I don't care how much I like them. Yeah. I would never want anything to uh, to get them to justify. Well, yeah, it's their... changing the rules, right? Every four years you're supposed to get, there's an opportunity for the, the country to put their vote in and say, yeah, and that's, you're robbing them of that, right? right. You're bending the rules. Yeah, you don't uh, want to take any rights away from it's the not, people. It's uh, never a good idea. I get that. I see what you're saying. It's... No, because, yeah, because if that would be, that would set a completely new precedent and then you would see it happen with other presidents. Like, oh, we got an emergency right now. The economy's down or, uh oh, this, exactly. you know, we got a terrorist attack. Let's, let's this. And then next thing you know, you got some president who's, 
just you know, dragging it on yeah, as long as they can. Yeah, he's 15 years, you know, 16 years like Putin, you know, just remaining in power forever. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, no that, that would not. Scary thought. No. Are you speaking of, you know, speaking of clown world here, uh, you, did you see that uh, Jeremy Buendia is now uh, tied with <laughs> Rise Supplements? <laughs> I'm so glad you what? brought this up. <laughs> yes, dude. You remember we brought up Rise Supplements like a couple years ago when they first pivoted, and I told everybody that that was a shreds pivot, right? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, you know, SEO uh, marketing manager guy from Shreds, when Shreds went under, pivoted and opened up um, uh, Rise Supplements. And right away, uh, I know Joey Swole was a part of it, so I'm, my guess would be that he's a silent partner. He was probably wise enough not to put his name on it, but is a, is in, invested in it or connected to it somehow because he was the first knucklehead of the of yeah. the Shreds group. You found That's, a new gullible uh, candidate. Yeah, it's like so yeah. so fitting. Buendia would go Some more with watermelon like BCAs that, for it's everybody. Like his ninth supplement company he's been tied to since he's been competing. But yeah. this is the one. This is the one's gonna stick, dude. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the one. This guy. is the one that got me yeah. to look like this. Actually. You got this. Yeah, you know, I, I really hope that guy like is saving his money and investing it because his 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 moment in the pan. You know, I was flashing the pan moment. That's gonna end at some point. And then he's going to be screwed. So I, I really hope he's saving his money oh, and taking advantage of. It happens for a lot of these young guys, man. Uh, especially with, uh, and I think we see this the rise and fall faster now, right? I mean, yeah. because you could you because you can become famous overnight on social media, and you know, go from somebody who's got a few hundred people paying attention to you to all of a sudden millions. Um, boy, does that really that really inflate? Uh, your ego in so many ways and also give you this false perception that you actually know how to run a business because by default, when you have that many eyes on you, I mean, you could be selling anything or doing anything. And as long as you're getting a half a percent of a percent on millions of people, you've got a viable income right now. And yep. so it gives a lot of these pe these these young kids that that get that attention this false perception that they actually could run a, a legitimate business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, no, I, I think you're going to see uh, a lot of rise and fall, and this will be interesting during this time too. Because I mean, you, do you Justin was bringing it up to me when we were working out. He's like, dude, do you see like some of the the fitness girls that are pivoting to the fan page, to the fans only page right it's away? No, all, all over the place, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I was just following people for legit content for like you know kettlebell training whatever and of course yeah they have great bodies or whatever and then they realize you know whenever they do a certain pick with their butt they get way more attention next thing you know i'm looking and they're all kind of directing and funneling you into this like website that they want to you know get you to subscribe and see all the extra stuff you know and i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> Okay. Justin's all, you know? <laughs> Justin's all hey, 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 Justin's like, yeah, no, I'm following them for the exercise technique and form. <laughs> yeah. And then come you know, on, man, weird. it was legit there so for I, a bit. So, then, so I paid the 19.99 yeah, to find out if I'm she had saying. more impressive uh, kettlebell. They're still moves. doing the good exercises <laughs> just without clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's all. No, you know the, I, the you know the IRS has, has been going after all these uh, like uh, you know these these types of business, these cam girls and this whatever. Oh, and, are they? Uh, yeah, and you know, you know who's uh, oh, trying to uh, tax them, right? Yeah, yeah, trying to tax them. You know who's reporting them? Guys that are angry they paid six months membership and got to see like yeah. not what they wanted. Yeah, all guys, these disgruntled like yeah. Of, of, exactly. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> it's it, yeah, who else would it be? <laughs> yeah, all the all the guys that she told me it, I was her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> She's my girlfriend. Yeah, she just got yeah, you. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm one eight hundred IRS. I'm telling them. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're screwed. Yeah. Well, I, down. I, well, I wonder if we will see. I will. I wonder if we'll see a lot of that uh, go under. I mean, you got to think that there's a ton, a ton of these uh, girls that aren't paying taxes on this income. I'm sure it's uh, a hustle through, uh, you know, PayPal's and mm -hmm. the uh, the what you call well, it's quick definitely cash a apps. way to make money right now. Yeah, like while everybody's at home. Yeah, well, what I mean, what a, uh, it's going to be an interesting to see how many people actually pivot to that. Uh, imagine you're a you know hundreds of thousands or millions of people watching you, and you're a hot fitness chick, you know the, and now all of a sudden you're confined to home, and you know nobody's buying anything that you're selling, mm -hmm. and so uh oh, you know Pornhub's doing well though, yeah. so maybe that oh, is maybe it's I'll go that crushing direction. right now. It right. Must be. <laughs> They're hitting record numbers, uh, apparently. They are. <laughs> well, did you, are at home. So did you see that, you know, one of the biggest concerns right now oh, yeah. about uh, all of us being home is the bandwidth for the web. Yeah. 
Everybody's using it right now at the same time. Think about it. Have you already had issues? I mean, I've already had issues with us streaming Netflix and stuff like that. I'll go, you know, sometimes, like, especially when it's like in the at five, six o'clock at night when probably most people are sitting down after dinner to watch a movie or show. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a while for it to load. Uh, phones really slow in certain time, and it's. Uh, I'm sure everybody's starting to feel it getting bogged down, and they're 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 scrambling to find ways to uh, open it up for for more more traffic, more people. But that's like one of the big no things. way. Yeah. So I, I haven't I haven't noticed any of that, but I, but so what you're what you're saying then is not necessarily like the whole internet, but rather these companies like Netflix who are unable to provide this, this service to yeah. you know as many people because because i mean it, the internet was being used like crazy before it was just well it's work. just so much volume so much traffic at once i don't think they've ever had before and so like the back end i'm sure is you know like it's not running as optimally as it used to right so your com- your companies like you're saying netflix the sprints you know this all the streaming services you know, I, 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 you know, if I understand it correctly, like, you know, they, they allocate a certain amount of bandwidth that they're utilizing to run their community and they have enough analytics that, oh, we yeah. have, you know, 10 million people that are subscribers and users at the average rate of this many hours. Okay. We need this much bandwidth to manage that. Uh, but that's getting blown out of the water right now for all these companies because everybody's home and on their phone or on their TV streaming. Yeah. I, I wonder if, if Netflix, uh, in companies like that, if their revenues are going to be, uh, if they're if they're going up right now, if they're if they're going to be making more money because of this, what's going on? Got to be, dude. Yeah, got to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, I, I got I got to think the the streaming services are killing it. The the, the food delivery services are killing it. Um, oh, dude. So you know, I talked to our friend. I don't want to say their name, but I talked to our friend who is an uh, an investor um, with uh, our sponsor, Magic Spoon, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and they're 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 crushing they're oh. selling boxes left and right because people are you know people are afraid to go to the grocery store and you know magic spoon is kind of comfort food it's like it tastes like kids cereal but it's and but then it's also high in protein so and it stores it, well for a long time too so mm-hmm. yeah dude they're selling like yeah, yeah, they're crazy did you guys hear what they did in uh in new york city yeah i was gonna oh, yeah. i, I didn't have doug read that i know i i read the article and then uh doug had it so did you do you have it in front of you yeah so they teamed up with rethink food new york city and the food bank of new york city and they donated 20,000 boxes to children in New York That's who right. no longer wow. have access to school to school lunches. That's right. So, so badass. Yeah, yeah. You don't even think of that, right? You don't even I, I don't even consider that that you know, school is out, right? Okay, so kids aren't in school, but you know, a lot of a lot of parents rely on the school lunches to feed their kids. Yeah. And so now they're not at school. They're at home. They don't get those school lunches. The parents might, you know, be financially strapped on top of it. That's got to be a real tough situation. So I thought that the fact that Magic Spoon donated 20,000 boxes, that's a lot. Yeah. No, that's actually one of the big concerns with a lot of public schools right now. I mean, my buddy who's the principal uh, at a public school uh, over in the in the Valley is that's uh, like one of their biggest stresses is that you know, like I think they, he told me like over 60% of the students rely on meals one and two from the school. Yeah. Uh, you know, because uh, their their household doesn't uh, make enough income to feed the kids, you know, three to four times a day. So the schools carry yep. uh, uh, a big uh, part of that burden. And so obviously with the school shut down, everything going on, they had to pivot and find way they're getting food donated and they're out there with trucks and t- fold out tables. And then the kids are still able to come and pick up meals. Dude, kids are going to be, you know, when, when school's back in session, Timmy's going to show up like, you know, five pounds of lean body mass. All, <laughs> all, jack, all jack from his high protein, you know, cereal oh, that he's yeah. having or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ready for recess, man. Uh, yeah. Just, just, just jacked or whatever. How are your kids? Do, how are your kids doing with, uh, with all this? I know, uh, I see Justin and Courtney every day, you know, uh, constantly r- getting onto this trying kid. to wrangle the, <laughs> yeah, the, the kittens around. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> well, you know, as the listeners know, I'm self quarantining. I think, uh, either tomorrow or s- Saturday or the, at the latest Sunday, I'll feel like it's going to be safe to, cause I'm just being over, over cautious. Right to go get the kids because they're with their mom right now and she's losing her mind. She like, <laughs> I, know. She, I, can, dude, I can imagine. She said, 
she sent me a, a, a message and she's like, uh, she's like, I think you're fine now. Come get the kids. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Because yeah. The, the, well, the, the homeschooling is tough. Yeah. It's, oh, it's no, really no, tough. of course. Especially if like in your ex's case where she's also still trying to work. Right. So I can't imagine trying to work and then all i mean it's a full-time job to be a teacher so mm -hmm. to try and be a teacher and working your job at home and it's not something that's your love and passion obviously because you're not a teacher yeah. i can't imagine how stressful and uh how many, how many parents are going crazy right now yesterday uh when uh justin's kids were at the table working on their stuff that i hear them all yell in the the dining room oh my god a bobcat and i get up and i, I walk over the window and there's this bobcat running through the snow like from our house over to our neighbor's house and we're all kind of watching it i actually videoed it it's on my insta story uh but they uh, this bobcat went into the neighbor's garage and so we're like uh do, you, do we go over there and tell yeah. them that? i think that i think that's the That'd right be thing a nice to... surprise you yeah. know going into your car <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. so <laughs> Ju Justin had to go to the neighbor's house. Uh, we sent him. We figured that was the right idea. If, if yeah. he hey, Justin, yeah. first time I Justin, met our neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Justin, how does the, what's the bobcat sound? <laughs> what does it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it sounds like yeah. fucking Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I only got a few, uh, you know, noise effects. And that's, <laughs> that's one of them. Yeah. That sounds. I sort of got. If I heard that, I'd be like, "That's a fucking bobcat right now." I, I know, would, right? Uh, nailed <laughs> it, dude. For sure. I would one hundred percent. No, you know. <laughs> My my uh, the the my daughter's uh, having the most difficulty because you know I've talked about this before. I always stress to my kids like hard work, so I, I don't tell them. You know, I try not to say things like "You're so talented, you're so smart." I, instead, I say things like, "Wow, I can see that you really worked hard at that, and I, I can see that you tried hard because I want to emphasize, you know, you know, working hard because you know life is going to pose challenges and and hard work is you know, having an attitude that you're a hard worker is better than thinking that you're talented because at some point that'll get challenged and then, you know, that'll kind of crush you or whatever. But there's a, there's a little bit of a drawback to that. And that's that, you know, like my daughter is really demonstrating this. She's like a perfectionist. So if she misses like one thing off of her test mm. or if she, you know, did her homework and, and forgot something, mm. holy shit, dude. It's like, she like won't go to bed. Meltdown until city. She, yeah. It was, she, she just won't go to bed until she gets it all absolutely perfect. And oh, so wow. I'm, I'm like backtracking right now. I'm yeah. like, taking some steps back and I'm trying to like talk to her about the, the benefits of, you know, being calm mm. and how to handle stress and how that <laughs> is going to, you know, contribute to her success. Like I don't need to push that kid at all. She yeah. pushes herself. Wait. And that's why her mom is having, <laughs> is having trouble because she's losing her shit every single day because you know, it's, it's all new doing stuff at home from, from school. And so she's messing up here and there because she's got to get, you know, get acclimated to this new way of, of doing school mm -hmm. and she's just losing her mind. So it's a uh, little, 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 uh, little warning to those parents out there who, you know, took my advice before it might go too far basically. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you, did you guys, uh, uh, you, have you guys heard how they may be using the blood from people who had coronavirus and recovered, how they may be using their blood to treat other people. I heard that from like their antibodies that they formed. Yeah, so it's an old approach. Uh, it's a, a, according to this article, so I read this article. This is from uh, Scientific American. Great publication, by the way. So if you like oh, yeah, science and mm -hmm. yeah, if you like to get deep into things, uh, you got to check them out. But they're they're saying uh, hospitals in New York City are gearing up to use the blood of people who have recovered from COVID nineteen as a possible antidote for disease. Researchers hope that the century old approach of infusing patients with the antibody laden blood of those who have survived an infection will help, which mm. is this. I did not know this. This is an old century old, uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess that they're, they're basing this off of studies in China, uh, that showed that the, the, that the blood of survivors contained all these antibodies and that in the preliminary results, they actually showed some, some benefit. Are we, crazy, right? Are we that finally are we finally seeing China and Italy both uh, flatten out and begin to decline, or are they are well? They, are they are we still seeing more and more? Well, China is hard to believe because it's they hard lie. to it's because hard, they lie hard to beginning. believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, it's it's hard to believe anything that comes out of there. Their information, Italy, it looks it's too early to tell, but it looked like the deaths have 
flattened out a little bit or dropped a little bit, but it's too it's too early to tell because what what tends to happen with these types of things is you see it spike, 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 and then there'll be like a couple days where it looks like it's going down, but then boom, there's another you know really big day. So I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll see. I hope it. I hope it's definitely. I hope it's it's reached its spike already though. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say right now. Even like us, it's hard to say what's happening. I mean, we're we're at a. I think we just passed over a thousand. Uh, yeah, I. And- I was talking to my dad last night. So my dad is um he 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 can't sit still. The guy needs to always be doing something productive. So this is like torture for him. He's stuck at home. So he's remodeling the the back. He's doing the whole backyard Mm -hmm. he's doing the front yard he's tearing up cement he's laying down brick he's just you know he's doing all kinds of you know to the best of his ability he's got a lot of pain and stuff so he's doing it in chunks but still the guy has such a tough time sitting still but anyway he was grinding cement down to try and level out the backyard and uh you know it creates a lot of dust right yeah so last night my dad calls me on the phone and, um, you know, and I, I can hear in his voice that he's, he's a little worried and he's like, uh, so he goes, so Sal, he goes, uh, uh, you know, I'm having a little trouble breathing, you know, I'm having a little shortness of breath. So I'm like, Oh, I'm like, do you have a fever? Do you have a cough? Have you been around anybody? He goes, no, he goes, but it's really weird. I got a little bit. And I'm like, weren't you grinding cement yesterday? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, I think it's the dust. I think it's probably the, the I said, you know, I totally get my hypochondria tendencies, uh, from my dad. <laughs> But anyway, we're, we're, we're talking about this. I'm trying to calm him down. So I pulled up some statistics just to give him a little bit of uh, perspective, you know, mm-hmm. and these statistics help me out, too. Um, now, I, again, I'm not making light of, any, of anything because I, th- I still think what's happening right now, we got to be careful and it could be very dangerous. But, you know, I, I pulled it up for him and I said, look, I said the there's only there's been one thousand deaths uh, due to coronavirus in the entire United States. It's probably going to go up. But as of right now, there's 1,000 deaths. Between October to February, there's been a, cl- between 30 to 50,000 deaths uh, from the flu. So I said, just to give you some perspective, you know, we weren't walking around super, super paranoid and afraid of the, you know, of the flu, and that's killed, you know, 50 times more people. And I said, you know, not to not to make light of it, you still got to be careful and all that stuff. I said, but you know, our fears can really, uh, get the better of us, especially right now. And, you know, because he, you know, breathed in some dust. Now he's like, Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I, and I can't, I, there's so many people I guarantee right now getting allergies and stuff who are like, well, freaking out, I know, you know? It, it's tough. Cause I, I have this feeling that there's a lot of people at the, the hospital with like probably not as severe of symptoms as you know, should be at the hospital with, but it's like, it's hard to tell people cause you know, the fear really sets in. And if they feel like they're really sick, like they, they want to, you know, get treatment and, you know, get it all taken care of. But at, at this time we need to really like make sure like those hospitals are, you know, apt to, to take care of people that really need it. Well, you know? 97% yeah. of them aren't. I yeah. mean, 97% of them are uh, reporting mild symptoms. And those are the mm. people that are reporting, which these are people that have been told they have it, which means they've tested, which means they probably yeah. came into a more than likely came into a hospital to get tested. So 97% of the people that are going to the hospital that are overwhelming the hospitals right now are have mild symptoms. So there's, it's still only 3% of them that have the severe yep. symptoms. I read an article um, from a researcher from Oxford university and, you know, it's a data, uh, this, this, I guess this, this person analyzes data and they came up with a theory that this, that this virus has been circulating for much longer uh, mm. than mm-hmm. we think that it, it might've been circulating, you know, back in, you know, January or even December, or November, and that there's far more people who've already had it um, than we realized. And that actually makes me feel a little bit comforted if that's true. You right. know, I feel a little, I feel good if that's the case, then I feel like, okay. Yeah, there's probably a lot more cases of people recovering, you know, from, yeah. from earlier. But yeah, that 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 is somewhat comforting. I, I re- well, I read the same article and I remember I was talking to my, my two best friends and we all went through this thing when we came up to Tahoe two months ago. And every one of it took the whole house. The kids got it. Everybody had fevers. Uh, it lingered for almost three weeks. And every one of us were all, man, that is, I was either the worst flu I've ever had, or it was one of the worst I've ever had in my life. And we were all sick for like two, three weeks. 
and uh, the symptoms that everybody is talking about for COVID-19, I swear, were all the symptoms that we all had. So I feel really, like, and that was two months ago uh, when we were all up here. So yeah, I, I, I would be curious to, to know like how many people, uh, one, um, aren't going to the hospital and, and reporting it because they're, they're managing through it. Right. Because it's yeah. m- mild symptoms. And I mean, if it, I, I can't be alone, I can't be the only man who's like this, who like, I'm, I have to be dying to go to the hospital. Yeah. Katrina, yeah. anytime I, you've ever heard of me going to the hospital, it's mainly because of Katrina's forced me into the car and she's like, you need to go. Yeah. You need to go. That's, You're really bad. Otherwise, I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'll let you know when I feel like I'm going to die. I'll, I'll, I'll then tap out and go. Otherwise, I'll fight this thing. And so there's got to be thousands of people that are yeah. that have mild symptoms like that and are just staying home and sick in bed and fighting through it. And we're not getting the reports of those numbers either. So, yeah. Did, now, did you have all you had all the symptoms? All of the dry of cough, oh, the I had the, I had the dry cough. We had the fever and the fevers were up and down like constantly. And uh, it was bad, dude. It was really bad. I remember your son too. He was he yeah. had a fever like on and off for like my like son. A week and both half. both Jared and uh, Justin's uh, son and daughter were had to go to the hospital. I mean, it was it was bad. You know, they were all, we were all hitting 103 temperatures and stuff. So well, they're coming up with a uh, they're coming out with a test because right now the the test they have shows if you have the active virus, but they're actually in the process of working on a test that will see if you had uh, it. Test your antibodies. Yeah. So, mm. I, oh my gosh, can I tell you something right now? Like, because mm-hmm. you guys know I'm obviously getting, I'm on the mend. Uh, I will be so happy if I got tested and they found that I had antibodies and like, actually, you had it. I'd be like, oh, yeah, Whew, you got know? that over with. Yeah. Right. yeah, I feel like Superman. You know what I mean? Walking around, just you know, not even caring, high fiving people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> are you are you guys taking a lot of supplements right now since you guys are locked up? Because I'm just, I'm on uh, I have on a been tear. just are you just the usual? I mean, whenever I mean, this is like even though we're not traveling, right? We're up at the other home, but it's still tough to get uh, consistent green. So for me, it's yeah, it's the it's the usual it's a challenge. Yeah, it's the usual green juice. I mean, I probably utilize that more than almost anything else when we travel. I mean, I've used the pre-workout a few times to get it, get myself going in the morning uh, to lift, but for the most part, it's been green juice for me. I mean, that's what I probably use more than anything oh, else. Oh, dude, I, I'm I'm doing the 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 green juice, the Organifi green juice three times a day right now. Just mm-hmm. I, I'm mixing it, putting it on ice, sipping on it, and it just. You know, I, I, I'm not getting as many vegetables either because, you know, vegetables go bad. So that means you have to go to the grocery store more often. And I really don't want to go through the whole process of yeah. going to the grocery store, putting on the, the, the mask and, you know, bringing everything home, washing everything with soap, this whole whatever, you know, paranoid thing that I do. So I'm drinking that thing three three times a day. I don't think I've ever drank, taken it that much. And it's actually it's actually helping it's you know it's it's a it's a poor substitute for vegetables uh vegetables are the best possible you know real vegetables mm-hmm. are the best possible thing but i i do notice it helps with my digestion um you know more so than if i didn't take it uh, at all so. oh we were we we were i mean it's not it's not even by choice for us i mean it's this time it's like we have to i mean we were we went to the grocery store all there was literally only just frozen t- and there was, was only it. two bags of it yeah. i got the last of it J- doug was like we got to get some greens he's like i'm dying for greens and we ate those in like two seconds yeah so, so we're that, like oh now what yeah, yeah so we had uh we had frozen broccoli and frozen green beans uh there was one package of each of those left i grabbed them doug did them in the air fryer uh for one of the day or two of the days uh, we had veggies. Other than that, we've had to pretty much uh, utilize the green juice. I mean, they're yeah. very, I'm very doubling, minimal. tripling up on those packets. Man. Yeah, very, very minimal veggies for us, just because, just because it's, it hasn't been available. Are you guys all constipated or what? You should no. take the psyllium husk. I know Doug's got some psyllium husk. That That stuff right. can help. I don't know. Maybe I've been okay. Yeah, I've been good. I've actually been good. It's kept. I mean, as long as I'm taking that, I feel like I'm pretty regular, and it doesn't really throw me off. I, I don't believe you, Justin. You always say you're good, and I always see what happens after. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I blast it out, and yeah. it gets out. Yeah, I can't yeah. prove him wrong. I can't prove him wrong. He's, he's like, in the want? he's in the 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 maids unit, right? So he's got the whole place to himself over there. So I can't check his bathroom or anything like that. Yeah. So ask, hey, I still ask tear for it up. Re- yeah. Ask for a report from the cleaner. Say, hey, just you know, let me know if there's anything you know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you had to use a you know a high pressure washer to get off. You know, let me know. <laughs> what can I say? This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Tanson82. How do you guys get your kids to eat healthy? Mine refuses to eat most of the healthy meals I make. Well, mine is mine's on the same diet. He's a he's a hundred percent boob right on now. The boob diet. Yeah, he's yeah. on the boob diet, so <laughs> he doesn't stray from that. It's pretty easy. <laughs> it's a, in fact, he seems to love it. Yeah, uh, who has doesn't? No qualms from him whatsoever. So he pretty much listens to everything I tell him to. As far as uh, what, what, what <laughs> enjoy I while it lasts, my <laughs> yeah, friend. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts. This, this is a really really tough one um, for me, especially because I was, you know, I was raised in a in a culture that we're feeding people and just making them eat a lot is how you show them that you love them and you care. And if a kid skipped a meal, it was like the worst thing ever. I mean, my mom uh, takes pride in the fact that she can get kids to eat more and she follows kids around while they play and she distracts them. And when they, you know, when they're not looking, she puts slips food in their mouth and they eat. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, uh, and so I grew up that way. So this is a really, really tough one because you know, telling my kids, this is all we're having for dinner. And then them saying, well, I don't want that. And then I have to be okay with them not eating like that is really, really tough. So this could be really hard. I think you have to just, you have to get creative. The biggest thing is this, is that, uh, the kids largely, largely follow their parents, um, behaviors and their lead. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't want your kids to eat, uh, snacks, you know, chips or cookies or, things that you don't, you know, aren't necessarily healthy, then you can't have them in the house. You know, I I know a lot of parents that they have the cookies and, you know, what they say is like, oh, that's just for me every once in a while. And I manage that, you know, but, you know, no one else can have it or the kids can't, whatever. That's it's it's harder to deal with that than just not having it uh, in the house. If it's not there, it's not there. So if your kid gets up and says, you know, I'm hungry, I want a snack on something, then you say, okay, go go look in the fridge and eat whatever you want. And if their options are a cheese stick and and apple, you know, and peanut butter, um, then that's what they're going to choose if they're really hungry. Um, because that's all, that's, that's all there is. The one strategy that, um, Jessica really helped me with, and this one was a tough one for me to, to adopt because it was so different. Um, again, from how I grew up was, uh, feeding the kids in order of priority so, um, let's say we have, uh, you know, um, let's say our, 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 our dinner consists of vegetables, uh, meat, and maybe some pasta or some rice or something like that. Um, we're going to serve the kids, the vegetables first, and, you know, I'll make sure it's a reasonable amount. So I'm not pushing it too hard and reasonable is different from, from child to child. So with my daughter, it's a lot less because I know, she really doesn't like certain vegetables with my son. I can give him a little more. You might have a kid that is so reluctant to eat anything that what you put on their plate is like one broccoli, you know, something like that. And then in order for them to go to the next course, uh, they have to finish the vegetables that are on their plate and that's their choice. It becomes their choice. They can choose. I don't want this. In which case you say, okay, well then you're done with dinner. Uh, which is a tough one. That's a Mm -hmm. tough one to do with your kids because if they don't want to eat, it's hard to leave them. Right. without any food, but it actually does work if you're, if you're consistent. So you put the vegetables and then, you know, they finish that and then you give them the next priority, which would be meat. And then they finish that. And then maybe the rice. And it depends on the kid. Like if you have a kid who loves meat, but refuses to eat any type of, you know, carbohydrates or refuses to have vegetables, then maybe you, you leave the meat last because you know, they're going to eat that you know, no matter what. So I know that this order can change from, you know, from family to family. For my kids, it tends to be vegetable, meat, and then, uh, you know, starch or carbohydrate. It tends to be in that order. Mm -hmm. Now I have, now I have no experience, uh, with this yet, but I do have a question that's related to this for both of you, uh, that I'm curious about because my, my theory is that a, a lot of this, uh, starts now. For like for me, and uh, I was joking, you know, the only thing that Max is not eating is the boob. We've introduced uh, 
foods. We started introducing foods about a month, month and a half ago. And, you know, he gets like, uh, you know, we'll take a avocado and a piece of banana and it gets, you know, blended together. And then she feeds him that, or it's blueberry and spinach. And, and so mm. we, we, we've introduced, uh, foods like that and we, we puree it ourselves and then, and feed them like whole organic foods. And my theory is that if, if we stay consistent with feeding him that way, as, as we've introduced these certain foods, and then as he starts to progress, I, we, we'll keep him eating like Katrina and I eat, that the struggle hopefully will be a lot less than what a lot of parents claim. And what I wanted to ask the two of you, because you both have two and that are different ages, do you feel that uh, you were like this with one better than the other? And do you see mm. a difference in their, because now both of you have grown kids that have been eating their foods for a long time now. Do you see a difference in the way you raise the two of them and then how their eating behaviors are today? I have to kind of go on record and kind of correct myself with this as well. And I was talking to Courtney about this because it, you know, we were so focused on you know, our firstborn for sure, like doing everything to the T, like blending all the whole organic foods and then like freezing them and then being able to, you know, feed them just like uh, once they're able to eat like real foods. Um, and I was under the impression that uh, that was sort of like to the wayside, which she corrected me and was like, no, we did the same thing with our youngest. And what we've actually found is they're completely two different personalities. Uh, and that's something that's, you know, not really something we could have accounted for. So it's it's two completely different strategies that we've had to apply uh, with, with both our kids. And again, they're, they're just they just gravitate naturally, I think, towards like certain types of foods that they enjoy. They completely are for some reason are repulsed by, and either that's because of the texture, the color, or whatever. And so, uh, honestly, it's been a real struggle with our youngest because he. He's just like, yes, he's very specifically like he needs things to have a certain color, a certain texture, like in order to be even remotely interested. And he will battle uh, to where I, I, I apply the same principles like you're talking about, Sal, where I'll introduce it first. You know, then we move on to the next and then uh, he'll actually will stop eating and then won't eat the whole entire rest of the night and then go on into the morning. And he's totally oh. fine with that. And he's like super like crazy stubborn with that. And so this has been kind of like an interesting battle. But one win, uh, and, and this is where we get a little creative. We got inspiration from Jerry Seinfeld's wife initially. Uh, she wrote this book that was helpful with introducing ways of sort of ninja-ing vegetables into certain types of foods and, and being able to uh, sneakily kind of add that in. Uh, so we we had like Hulk pancakes, and so we were able to kind of blend in spinach into a pancake mix and, and waffle mix and things like that. And then also like within uh, burger patties, we've been able to kind of like stuff that with vegetables as well and kind of sneak that in uh, through that. And we just got like real creative over the years with between that and like um, uh, spaghetti sauce. Like there's, there's a lot of ways you can, you can blend it all in. So it's, it's, they really have no idea. Uh, you know, there's that much vegetables w within the mix of, of the sauce. And so um, I, I get it, man. I get the struggle of certain kids are just have really strong personalities when it comes to what they like, what they don't like. Uh, but it, it really is about the parents having consistency. And so we, we take ownership of that. If like we're inconsistent, it shows in our kids, like, it, like the way we eat, like if they start kind of going off track, it's because we've been going off track and, uh, have been introducing things in the house. And so, uh, it, it again, it's, it's a reflection of, I guess like us. And then also like just trying our best to sort of move, especially our youngest, move him along on his palate in terms of like, okay, well, let's introduce peppers. Let's introduce, you know, these other types of, of vegetables we think he'll be able to, uh, you know, be cool with now and then kind of build upon that. Adam, I see a difference between my two for sure. Like when my ex-wife was pregnant with my son, she ate uh, healthier. Um, now, I know some of it has to do with the pregnancy. I think, uh you know, watching Jessica uh, be pregnant, like she, the first trimester, she's so uh, nauseous, 
and apprehend like so many foods just disgust her so it's hard it's really hard in this first trimester to eat you know foods that you would consider healthy um so i get there's that part of it but my my ex-wife definitely made a bigger effort to eat healthier foods when she was pregnant with my son and when she was with had my daughter she was much looser and then when they were babies i think this is true for a lot of parents when you just have one kid you tend to everything's you know much more perfect than the second and third one or whatever you tend to yeah. be looser with each one that so it totally happens yeah and so my 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 son his his palate is you know he likes uh you know we, we joke around like he's got the palate of an old man like he likes very diverse olives and fish <laughs> and he likes you know healthier foods and then my daughter she definitely gravitates more towards bread starches and, and sugar um so there's there's I, I see that difference there and this is just my own kids so I, I don't know how much of a uh an impact that had with you know what her mom ate when she was pregnant and then you know how we fed them as kids but man this is a this is a really tough one um uh, this is a tough one for me i mean i i'm a you know here i am a fitness expert or whatever a health ambassador and but <laughs> yeah, i right. you know oh i grew up a certain way and it's so ingrained in me and then the other side of it is i don't want to push too hard yeah, you don't want them to rebel. You don't want them to they'll, rebel. They'll get a complex about yeah, well, you it, don't yeah. want them to rebel when they get eighteen and then all they eat is gummy bears and fire Cheetos, because because dad because dad never let me enjoy anything like that. You know? right. right. Or I don't want them to develop, uh, you know, body image or food image issues because their dad is always on top of them, you know, about what to eat. And then to make it more even more challenging, when my kids go to their grandparents' house or they go stay somewhere else, that's the biggest uh, challenge. It, it's all out the window. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, the, my point of saying that is you also got to be, cause I know we have a lot of fitness fanatics listening. Um, you know, it's okay, like be, be, be kind to yourself. You don't have to be super crazy strict cause it could be a nightmare. Um, you know, kids bodies are more resilient than adults are, you know, they, they can get away with eat, not eating as perfect. You know, I, now in my forties, if I eat, you know, a bunch of garbage, I pay for it big time. When I was a kid, I, I, you know, I could eat a bunch of garbage. I, you know, I'd go trick or treating, I'd come home and I mean, you know, I had no governing on how much candy I'd eat one night. I literally sit there and eat as much as I wanted. If I did that as an adult now, I'd probably have to go to the hospital. So, right. you know, their, 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 their bodies are more resilient than, than adults. So, you know, be kind to yourself, but the, the vast majority of, of your kids' behaviors are learned from watching the parents. That's mm -hmm. the vast majority of anything you're trying to teach your kids how you are yourself is 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 the big big chunk of you know how they're going to be for sure. Next question is from Spoil Me Silly. Is it bad to extend all the way in a push movement like a shoulder press? People keep telling me not to lock out, but if I don't extend all the way, that's not a full range of motion, right? Bodybuilders, you know, kind of popularize this, right? Where they're like keep the tension on the muscle yeah. Yeah. and shorten the rep and that kind of stuff and I can see some value in that, um, especially for bodybuilders who are very, very developed, you know, big muscles, uh, and they've been training for years and years and years. But for for most people, cutting your reps short is going to be cutting your gains short, 100%. Like a full range of motion, studies have proven this time and time again, leads to better strength gains. And, you know, one of the reasons why you get better strength gains is the strength gains are spread out over the, all, the whole range of motion that you train. So if you stop your reps short, most of the strength things you're going to get are going to be in that short range. If you, if you train in a full range of motion, then you're going to get strength gains in that whole range of motion. And then of course, and then studies show that you build more muscle as well. I think the big caveat to this is when you do full ranges of motion is to not, uh, uh rely the, the don't let the weight sit on the joint don't let the joint support well that's the that's the real issue is is how you're distributing the force right so if you if you have good control and you're able to then uh you know stabilize properly with your shoulder blade uh kind of like you know activated and you're you're activating your back muscles your lats and your rhomboids and you know you're, you're able to then kind of transfer a lot of that force down through your arm in the lockout position so it goes down properly through your back and it doesn't stop right at the joint then there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, the lockout and that's something that people need to learn uh, how to properly do that first and stabilize overhead before even uh you know going through with with heavy loaded overhead pressing and so this is just these are sort of the prerequisites to uh you know like like standards in order for you to even like attempt that exercise well to that point that's why i love the z press 
uh, what you just said because it it helps take somebody who doesn't understand what you just said and and it tr- it kind of forces them to do that like right. if you do a z press and you press the barbell above your head and you don't fully lock out it'll tip you back over and in order for you to lock out and stabilize all those muscles that you just listed off end up engaging and stabilizing and so it really teaches you uh, how to do that properly, but yeah, I know if you if you're locking out, as long as you're keeping tension in the muscles mm-hmm. and you're not relaxing the weight on your joints, uh, and there's a big difference in that. Like you, if you re- are l- relaxing and the joints are taking all the stress, you could probably hold it there for a very long time. If you're keeping tension mm-hmm. in the muscle, your muscles will fatigue and you'll have to set it back down. And so, just keeping your muscles tense. Uh, and that goes for every exercise, not just shoulder press. Yes. I mean, it can be yeah. bench press, tricep push downs. It could be squatting. You know, when you come up from a squat and and we you know come in the lockout position, you're not supposed to relax your body. You're supposed to stay tense even in the full lockout position and keep keep the quads tense, keep the glutes tense, uh, even when you're completely locked out. Right. You want to remain active, uh, remain active throughout the whole range of motion. So. Think of it this way, right? Uh, imagine you're standing up straight. You can lock your knees and somewhat relax your body. And now what's supporting you are your joints. The, the ligaments uh, of your joints are supporting you standing. Mm-hmm. Or you can stand and remain active where your muscles are active and supporting you. Now, locking your knees out and just sitting on your joints, I mean, you put weight on that, mm. you're going to cause problems eventually. And that's yep. true for locking out your arms or any other joint. You don't want the ligaments uh, to support you because ligaments have a finite amount of strength. They have a finite amount of uh, you know elasticity. And eventually, over time, you can cause yourself uh, big problems. Now, muscles, if I remain tense and active, then my muscles will tell me when I can and can't lift the weight, and then I lower the weight if I need to. And the chance, the risk of injury is far lower. It's like it's like when you watch Olympic weightlifters and they do like really good ones and they do like a snatch mm-hmm. and you look at their elbows at the top of the snatch and their arms are totally locked out and straight, right? Yeah. Because they're supporting a very heavy weight. But you ask an Olympic weightlifter, are you resting this on your elbow joints or are you staying active and pressing out uh, while you're holding the weight up? Mm-hmm. And they'll tell you, you better stay active. If you lock the elbows out and relax, you're going to have a hyperextended elbow. Oh yeah. You're going to hurt yourself. So you got to stay active throughout the full range of motion, the problems with locking out come from losing that connection. That's where the problems come from. Yep. Next question is from Alexis Swayze. After all this coronavirus stuff blows over and gyms are open again, how do you go back to lifting heavy without injuring yourself? Oh, geez. Take your time. Yeah. Just take your time. There's no rush. I don't think you can stress that enough, though. I think, uh, I mean, I, I still learn this lesson Every time I'm out of the gym for, you know, a few weeks, because it's rare that I have more than a couple weeks that I take off. Maybe if I was really sick or an injury or something that kept me down for a month or more. But for the most part, if I take a hiatus, it's it's maybe a week or two that uh, I take a, a hiatus from like lifting consistently. But it never fails uh, how quickly the body adapts back the other direction and how little of volume and intensity that I need to, to stimulate growth again. And I always, almost always end up overreaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think uh, I can't be alone in this. If you're a, a, a advanced or consistent lifter and you've been lifting for years and you take a few weeks off, uh, you, you, you're you better off probably starting with less than you think you need mm-hmm. uh, and scaling up than thinking that you can go right back to where you were or even anywhere close to that. Like I always... I always tell clients, and again, this is like to your point, Sal, you always make, we're so much better coaches than uh, we are coaching ourselves. Um, I'm so great about doing this well with my clients. Like, oh, you have, you've been gone for two weeks. This is all we're going to do today. And they always go, oh, that's it. I can do I said, I know you can do more. It's not about you can do more. It's all we want to do is enough to elicit some change. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be enough to do that. And then next week, we'll build on that. And I do that really well with clients, not so well with myself, you yeah. know? So if you're listening and you are training yourself and you're getting back uh, from being home and probably very inconsistent with your lifting or you haven't been training heavy, uh, ease yourself in, probably start off with a lot less than what you think 
because you can always build on that. But mm. if you overreach, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for a, a quicker plateau. A lot of times it requires even more discipline to have that, that mindset and, you know, to, to really listen to your body, uh, is, is paramount, uh, coming back into the gym, uh, because uh, you already have this thought that I've, I've done this weight a million times. I, I know what that feels like. Uh, so what I, I've, I've tried to train myself to do this more consistently when there's been a big break in between training sessions is to just, you know, get under the weight, uh, slowly ramp my way up. But I, I'll tend to do things like pause squats and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tend to do like, like reps where I'm really taking my time with it and trying to, you know, get some more isometric tension in place, uh, so I can really feel, uh, you know, mechanically, uh, going through like what weight, uh, I feel like apt to lift at, at the time. And so a lot of times I'll reduce a lot of the volume of what I used to work out, uh, and, and slow down my reps and my cadence a lot, uh, and then start like reacclimating myself towards, you know, the heavier weights. Yeah. A, a good rule of thumb, and this is, you know, different from person to person, but I'm going to give you a general, uh, amount of time. So however much time you took off, uh, cut that in half, and that's the amount of time you got to give yourself to to slowly ramp up. So let's say you took six weeks off from the gym. So for six weeks, you haven't worked out. You go back to the gym. Give yourself three weeks of basic, beginner, slow ramping up. Give your body at least three weeks to start to get back to where it was before. So just take the time, divide it in half. Now, here's the other thing. If you're, if you're being consistent at home, let's say you're following maps anywhere, and you've been working out, at home this whole time, you're, you're, you're going to go back to the gym and it's not going to take much time at all to get back to mm -hmm. lifting weights. The, the amount of time it's going to take is just enough time for you to get used to the new movements again, because you haven't, you know, maybe deadlifted and, you know, barbell road or whatever, um, you know, for a few weeks, but if you've been staying active and you've been following good programming this whole time, um, you're probably, you, you know, you're going to bounce back really fast. But if you're taking this time off, Take that time, divide it in half, give yourself that much time to get back into the gym, uh, to, 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 to practice movements, have the attitude where you're going to the gym to practice movements versus going to the gym to work out, you know? So it's like, okay, I'm back in the gym. I'm just going to practice my squat. I'm just going to practice my bench press, just kind of go through the motion, full range of motion, feel it, get connected to it. You know, I've been off for four weeks, so I'm going to give myself two weeks of doing this. By the time you get to the third week, then you can ramp up the intensity again see how you feel. This is how I like to use uh, soreness. I, I, I don't use soreness for any other, you know, gauge of my, my workout, uh, you know, effectiveness. It's not, I think it's a terrible way to gauge whether or not a workout was effective, but it is a okay. It's not perfect, but it's an okay way of telling yourself if you overdid it. So if you go back to the gym and you're like, wow, I'm exceptionally sore. Like I'm way more sore than I normally get. You overdid it. You probably overdid it. So go way easier and try to find an intensity that causes you to feel either no soreness or just a little bit of soreness. Um, that's how I would use that, that gauge right there. Next question is from Shan FitLife. What are the pros and cons to artificial sweeteners? And is there one that is better than the others? Oh boy, hmm. big debate here. This, is a, this has been an ongoing debate in the fitness space, the health space. Um, I had a, a an online um insta it was like a, yeah. a story on instagram lane norton. debate with with lane norton over this i like and, how she i like uh, how she worded it though with the pros and cons versus sometimes people ask are artificial sweeteners bad and i think that's where that's where this gets really uh tough to to have this conversation yeah. but i can i feel like we can list pros and cons you know yeah yeah i'll i'll do that i'll, I'll start with some i think you know, are they, first off, let's start off with, are they bad for you? Um, you know, they're not poison, so you're not going to poison yourself with them. Uh, but there's some studies that show that they may not be ideal, uh, for the body, that they may potentially have some negative, uh, impacts on your, your, your microbiome. They may have impact your body's ability to utilize insulin or how it responds to, you know, sugar, you know, sugar, when you do consume it, um, or how it changes your perception of, of, of taste and flavor. So there's studies on that. And that, you know, we can, we can go back and forth on that. Um, here's some pros. I'll start with some pros. One of the pros is if you are somebody that tracks your food and you know what your calories are, 
that, that are coming in, you know what your carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are, you know how many calories you burn. Then you can utilize artificial sweeteners as a way to give yourself hmm. a treat uh, without uh, taking in more calories. Now, the reason why I said if you're that person that tracks is because studies are pretty clear on this. People who don't track, who just try to reduce their sugar by consuming artificial sweeteners, actually don't do so. They actually end up eating, uh, making up the calories in other places because, and it's probably because the the sweet flavor, uh, you know, makes you crave mm -hmm. more food to begin with. So studies are pretty clear on this. When people replace their sugary drinks in foods with artificial sweeteners, they don't lose any weight. You would think they would because they cut out calories, but the reality is they're probably replacing them with other calories. But when they have studies where people control their calories, well, then, yeah, people can lose weight because now they're actually reducing uh, their caloric intake. So that that's that will be one of the pros. If you track, then, you know, you can you can probably use them in a way to help yourself so you know, get leaner or whatever. This is exactly what happened with me. Now, I've openly discussed, uh, you know, my my love for Diet Cokes and. It's not. It's not something you will. Occasionally, you'll see me uh, with one. I think I had one when we were in the uh, Ohio trip. I, I think I picked one up in the airport. Uh, I don't know if it's been probably been months before that. Uh, but I, what I've done now is I've switched over to the the Hanson's real cane sugar uh, root beers. And if I have a craving where I I want a soda or something like that, I'll go have that. And I have to take into consideration the 180 calories that it has. And I think about that and I go, okay, well, I got to be careful if I've had that. Um, I can't, I'm not going to let two or three run back or what else I'm going to have uh, with my dinner. Uh, uh, I got to take into account that I'm eating an additional or drinking an additional 180 calories. And that's how I, how I have managed now. And I actually have, have lost the craving that I used to have for the Diet Cokes. And the craving for the Diet Cokes really came from competitive days. Uh, when I was competing and tracking everything, uh, it was it was my treat. It was my sweet tooth. If I because I wasn't eating sweets, uh, I was dialed nutritionally. And if I was like really craving something sweet, I'd have like a diet coke or something, and it would it would fulfill that sensation, and it would also keep me from cons over consuming on calories. So uh, it worked incredibly for me when I was tracking. When I was no longer tracking, I fell into the category that you just said. I would drink the Diet Cokes, but it wasn't keeping me from putting on body fat. I was, because I wasn't tracking. I was, you know, oh, I'll drink the, the, the Diet Coke. That would promote more hunger and make me want to eat something else. Because I'm not tracking, I would easily overconsume without even really noticing. And I was putting on body fat that way. And then I thought, okay, let me see if I switch to a real sugar drink and still allow myself to have it. If I have a craving, okay, I'm going to go have it. But now because I'm having it, I recognize like, okay, this isn't like free. It's costing me 180 calories to have this. Mm -hmm. I made me more mindful, and so I'm seeing the same weight, right? Like I'm not, I'm not going up or down, and now I'm having real sugar in my in, in my drink, and it's mainly because I'm not tracking and I'm kind of intuitively eating. If I was back into, if I was trying to really make aggressive moves, I probably would utilize Diet Coke again because I'm tracking, I'm counting, I'm paying attention, and I know that I have no calories left today, but I have a sweet tooth. I'm going to go have a Diet Coke. I'm going to fulfill that. Okay, I feel okay. I'm fine. But if I'm not tracking and I'm still in the habit of drinking those Diet Cokes, then I'm still making up the calories other places mm. in the day. Yeah, yeah. We always, we always talk about, again, you got to consider our, our backgrounds and our experience. You know, uh, Adam, Justin, and myself trained people for two decades, uh, coached people, worked with people. And what you what you learn uh, through doing that is that uh, you have to work with the behaviors, not the mm -hmm. mechanistic, you know, physiological aspects of food. Because if we look at it from a mechanistic standpoint, uh, you know, and this is what a lot of people in the fitness space do, especially look, a guy like Lane Norton, who's like super defends artificial sweeteners. The vast majority of his coaching is with competitive, uh, you know, bodybuilders, busy competitors. Right, competitors. It makes a lot of yeah. sense. For, it makes a lot of sense for those people. Now, right. somebody like Lane, uh, does he have an actual hierarchy of like a difference between like aspartame versus stevia? Is there some kind of like a uh, list that he has in terms of like priorities for those? He says they're all fine. They're you know, all the he same. Says they're all fine. Yeah, as long as they're used, you know, they're not abused. They're totally fine. But again, you know. His experience is working with those people. Right. And so everything's very mechanistic, you know, you know, calories in versus calories out. Here's your macros. You're good. Now, the average person, that just doesn't work. You, you, you know, count your calories, count your macros. Watch. OK, there's a, there, there's there's definitely some value to that. But that is a very ineffective long term strategy 
for the vast majority of people out there. And <clears throat> if you're somebody that's counting your calories and your macros all the time for the rest of your life, that's also dysfunctional. So behaviorally speaking, okay, when we're speaking about the, the behaviors that people have, here's what ends up happening when people consume uh, artificial sweeteners. Number one, when you're consuming something that's really sweet, it does change how you perceive the taste of food. Now, can that have an effect on the, the food choices that you make? Absolutely. Have a bunch of artificially sweetened drinks throughout the day and then go have some fruit. You're going to find that fruit starts to taste bland. You're going to find that you're going to crave more of that really, really sweet taste. Um, here's the other problem. You know, there are natural barriers that help us kind of stay conscious of what we're doing. Like, here's a good example. Okay, You, you look back in the in the 60s, the 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 free love era of the 60s and the 70s when, you know, birth control first hit the market and people were just banging each other left and right, no condoms, no, not worried, no one's going to get pregnant. And then HIV hit the scene. And all of a sudden you've got this new fear. Oh my God, like what's going on? There's this new barrier and people did have to kind of change their behaviors a little bit, right? So when we're looking at like food that tastes sweet but has calories, there's a barrier there. You know, when Adam reaches for his root beer with 180 calories there's a natural barrier he's aware of oh that's 180 calories i'm gonna right. i'm only having one okay but if it's an artificially sweetened coke or whatever there's no barrier there oh there's no calories i'm gonna have yeah. as much as i want and so behaviorally speaking this is what i would end up seeing with clients i almost never saw clients who had artificially sweetened beverages have one every once in a while it was typically All three or four a day mm -hmm. you know they would just consume them like crazy because there's no natural barrier of calories. So they never develop that relationship of, I should probably watch this a little bit. So they'd consume a ton, a ton of them that in, in, in effect then would change how they perceive taste and they'd eat more calories. And again, the studies are clear when you, people just replace sugary beverages with sugary, with, with artificially sweetened ones, and then don't track anything, they don't gain or they don't lose weight. Nothing happens. They just they trade one for the other. They end up consuming more food. And so in my uh, my opinion is if you're not going to benefit from it, uh, you know, if you're not a tr if you're not an athlete that tracks constantly, you're not going to benefit from it. Um, why not just have the sugary drink? Be aware right. of this has extra calories and go with the real stuff. Plus, sugar is not as sweet as artificial uh, sweeteners. So uh, the I'll make the argument that consuming a lot of artificially sweetened foods will actually skew your perception of taste worse than sugar will. In fact, if you ha if you know somebody, maybe this is you listening, and you consume a lot of artificially sweetened drinks, when you go have a regular sugar one, it doesn't taste as good. You're 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 used to uh, the, the 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 extreme sweetness of our artificial sweetener. In fact, I think Adam, you've told me that. Oh uh, yeah, no, it was yeah. a, I didn't eat fruit before. I did, because I was such a sweet eat, candy eater and artificial. I mean, I had it all as a kid, uh, and I for sure hated fruit. But the reason why I hated fruit was because it tasted it tasted like nothing to me. Yeah, uh, it was so bland, and, and so I didn't enjoy any fruit. And it wasn't until I went on a really hardcore diet where I was all whole foods, and I eliminated all that, and then I reintroduced. And I mean, I tell you what. I mean, it's like if you go look at uh, Whole30, like their reviews, or you talk to somebody who's done the Whole30 diet, especially if you talk to like an, uh, like a, just a normal person, like my mom and her husband, they did the Whole30 last year. And the, that's like the number one thing that those, like somebody who has just never really paid attention to that before, like how does fruit taste to them and could it potentially have something to do with all the artificial sweeteners that they consume? And then now when they eliminate that and they're only eating whole foods, what a difference. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's it's mind blowing to them. They're like, oh my God, I've ne apple has never tasted so amazing. Oh my God, blueberries and strawberries are so rich and sweet. Like that wasn't like that for me. I'd, I'd eat fruit. And it tastes everything tasted like a watermelon or a melon to me, you know, like watered yeah. watered down and real basic with a little bit of flavor to it. Just didn't enjoy it until until I died it like that. And boy, did it, it make a huge difference. Now, now so, Adam, when you were consuming a lot of <clears throat> artificially sweetened drinks, how did sugar drinks taste? Did they taste less sweet and a little bit more bland? Yeah, no, that's that's why I think you end up doing so much of it is because it's uh I mean, it keeps stretching how much how much sweet you need to get that same that same punch. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean you yeah. see and you see candy brands do this all the time. That I mean I just saw somebody 
sharing like the extra sweet sour patches or whatever. It's like Jesus, like the first ones weren't <laughs> like it needs more. Yeah, like the first one wasn't. I mean, they were they're they're made of sugar. They're drowned in sugar. They're not sweet enough as it is. Like yeah, no, there's and that's definitely. I, I mean that they're they're following the market, right? I mean the the consumer is telling them that they're wanting that. People are pushing that. Well, the reason for that is because you just keep. Put your body gets adapted to that that level of sweetness, and so then it needs another level Such of it, a high potency, and then another level of it, and then and then when you try and have normal things like a you know you know whole organic apple, and then you think it's going to taste like your you know extreme sour patch kids or your all your artificial artificial flavored uh, pre workout drinks, like no, it's not because you've been consuming so much of that the body's got adapted to that level of sweetness. And you go back to having I, the same thing was for vegetables. Vegetables were very bland to me for the same reason. I felt like it because uh, even vegetables have this kind of like natural, sweet tasting flavor to them uh, when you have a very clean, pure palate. But when it's been doused with all these artificial sweeteners all the time, uh, vegetables tasted like nothing to me. Both vegetables and fruit had a whole new taste uh, for me after I eliminated the artificial sweeteners. Oh yeah, it's it's again. It, you you want to be aware of uh, how it's influencing your behaviors. You don't want to necessarily just look at it from a mechanistic standpoint and say, oh, it's no calories, and the FDA approved it, and therefore it's fine. There's no potential negatives. The vast majority of the negatives of consuming these things are how it influences your behaviors. And if you think of what's going to determine your success long term, it's all about your behaviors. I mean, it's, it's, it's really no different. It's literally no different than what we're seeing with, uh, with young men and the rise of, uh, of, uh, impotence, the rise of erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. among young men. Uh, you're seeing 20 year olds and 30 year olds with erectile dysfunction with, and you never saw that before. Now, why is that happening? Well, it's the rise of pornography. Mm -hmm. They're exposed to so much of this extreme stimulus that the real world is like the fruit was for you. It's bland. Yep. So you, you just want to be aware. So what does this mean? Does this mean the occasional, you know, artificially sweetened, uh, you know, product is is bad? No, it's it's that's okay. But you want to be aware of, of what it's doing. You want to be aware of overdoing it. That's a, that's a great analogy. You should probably use artificial sweeteners about as much as you use Pornhub. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so for Justin, that's why I calm down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out all of our free guides and resources. If you're stuck at home, you could do a lot of free reading on fitness, nutrition, and health. Get a lot of resources there. They're all totally free. Go learn a few things. There's some cool stuff there. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.